I once read about a Zenist technique about how to treat people, things and so on. The book was called How to Cook Your Life. It is as if you wash the dishes and you have a plate that you disrespect because there are plenty of plates in the modern world, right? But you treat this plate and washing it completely in the moment like it will be the finest jewelry that you wash for the emperor himself as the appointee to do this one thing to take care of this plate with your whole senses, passion, intellect to commit to it and this is an example of how to commit to life with everything you pursue you are doing only this one exact thing or many things but you do it masterfully, beautifully so self-cultivation a Confucian agenda of the mind of the senses of the intellect of everything you receive of everything you eat with your senses and mind including the spiritual senses why is it important? because amongst the biomass to give birth to a diamond to a dancing star to a spirit you need to pursue it. It's not given. Your soul, that pulp, is given with the embryo, with the development, evolutionary, developmental psychology. It's just an ectoplasm, nothing important. In the modern day, the soul is almost non existent. The pneumatic component, that is a rarity. So, why is self cultivation? Because only in such a way you may give birth to diamonds. Rarely anyone is reaching from the mud to be a fully bloomed lotus of realization. Most of people are thrown into cages into deep black ocean of tar. And that's where they remain, the platonic cave. That's the same thing but taken from the Buddhist perspective, for example. But I was supposed to talk about a different subject, namely that those who perceive the phenomenal world of causation and their own noses when it comes to being concerned about the world are like females quarreling on the market, like gossiping petty boys. And those who derive the causality from the great vastness of the oceans of the stars, of the causalities that happen trans-phenomenally, away from the visible world, and how to see that this hypostasis of great powers and forces of the universe, of gods, of divinities, is taking flesh in the world of matter, in what you see in the phenomenal world, what you receive through the gates of your senses and your mind is to see the past, the present, the future. And that is the secret of wisdom. If you know how to track causalities, how to intuit them, how to link them with your knowledge, perception, your virtue, your ethos, you derive how to act properly in each and every instance. That is how to derive wisdom in order to act greatly, no matter what are the circumstances. We all are flawed at times. We are flawed, yes. But to know how to amend it, correct it, and how to act with a great vista. Wisdom comes and goes, so does courage, so does cowardice, so does ethos. We are not strong, determined, at all times. We are not competent, eloquent at all times. But at least we reached the extent of our finest points. And from this substance the gods are made. From mortals, the little gods and goddesses. If you have no substance matter, if you didn't reach the extremes of your self-cultivation and refinement, what remains? 
mediocrity of the biomass. Don't complain that it is unjust. What is unjust is that they try to force equality upon you. If you are really excellent, even as a precariat, you may move amongst the masses in the cities as a tower, as a castle floating in the stars. You look around these Augia stables and you wonder how to reform this mass? Well, it's much too late. It's not the time for Mahayana Buddhism to thrive, to turn the dharmic wheel, wheels. That's a vehicle of Theravada. Excel yourselves. Maybe you'll inspire someone. But they need to be inspirable. Otherwise they'll remain as they are. And if they lay deep in mud in this ocean of Ta, even if you go to the greatest extent of inspiration, leadership, merit, you will achieve absolutely nothing. Why? Because the fields are completely empty and dead. There is nothing to harvest, there is nothing to grow. But then, find people who are not left to this biomass and develop them, inspire them. And sooner or later, they make circles. They escalate themselves amongst the mass. And perhaps they may inspire more and more. Find those people. Those people who are inspirable, who are merited and great. Lift them up. Check them. Checks and balances. Question them. And develop, for fuck's sake, develop the self-cultivated approach of your mind, of your life. Otherwise, the war is lost forever.